Um, so my name is Nishant Shah. I work for the Bangalore-based Center for Internet and Society. And for today's talk, I've drawn inspiration from students I teach. So I have a fancy-sounding fancy title. It sounds very learned. It didn't work out. Uh, but that's not what I'm going to talk about. What I'm really going to talk about is actually talking about the question of remix. And remix is a metaphor for our futures in learning. If we start looking at the kind of conversations we've been having, we'll realize that the kind of futures that we want to occupy are necessarily Remix futures which destabilize classroom hierarchies, for example, so that you have new relationships. Students are remixing, students are sampling, students are innovating, and that the classroom as we know it no longer exists and is not really relevant as a form. There is a certain radical potential which is attributed to Remix as well. Remix is going to change the world. It's going to threaten the Music and Film Industry Association, which spells out mafia, for example. Um, and that it's going to form ex ex exemplary new forms of knowledge production and cultural learning within the classrooms. So that with Creative Commons, for example, you have cultures of innovation, which is about remixing, reusing, and sharing that as if these were the kinds of things that were no longer available uh, or, or these were not precedents with earlier forms of knowledge production. What I want to do with this talk is to question this radical potential of remixing. I want to show you how remixing is exactly what earlier forms of cultural production were and that we need to think of remixing differently if we want to start thinking about futures in new ways. One of the first things that remixes do is that they preserve the sacredness of the text. Just like a book, the remix object is actually sacred. It cannot be touched. If you want to remix a remix object, you need similar kinds of licenses and permissions and so on and so forth. That there is a certain umbrella of ownership which is a part of that. That there is an authorial intention which is a part of remixing. So that you might be remixing the web, you might be remixing an audio piece, a video piece, you might be rewriting a book, but it eventually boils down to what you want it to mean and what are the conditions which you are going to put it into. Which means that anything that you produce, no matter how collaboratively, even within the wide world of Wikipedia, there is a certain attribution which goes back to the single author. I remixed it, we remixed it, but there is always somebody at the back of it who has remixed that particular object. There is a certain way by which invisible labors of, of technology work, of platforms, of conditions which enable remixing are always glossed over when we fetishize the remixed object. So that you will never, for example, think about anything else but replication of the original form in new ways. A remixed book is still a book. A remix sound clip is still a sound clip. A remix sound clip never becomes a narrative. If that is indeed the case, then I want to suggest to you that the remix is not a departure, but a return to older forms of cultural production and knowledge production, and that we need to now start uh, thinking about it in new ways. And I have three concepts for you to start rethinking remixing. That if we move beyond the fetishized idea of remix as an object, or remix as a process, we might be able to look at what are the kinds of mechanics, aesthetics, and politics which are involved in the processes of remixing. So I'm going to ask you to stop thinking about remixing at the level of content, which is where we generally posit the argument, and start thinking about three different forms. The first form comes from India, which is where I live, and it is the idea of Jugaad. Jugaad tries to talk about remixing of technologies themselves rather than remixing of the ideas or the content. So that if you ever had a mango lassi, and if you come to India, you will see a washing machine filled with yogurt, and it will be churning out mango lassi for you. <laughs> yeah? uh, the second form is from, uh, from China. It's called Shanzai. Shanzai literally means piracy, but it's actually talking about reverse engineering an idea. Not reverse engineering a product, but an idea. The third is from Thailand, where if you walk down streets of Bangkok, you will hear people who say same, same, but different. So that you have a Gaichi watch or a Noki, Noki shoe, which means that it is possible to take up the aura of an object and remix it. Yeah? I'm trying to talk about remix as a condition which allows for knowledge production rather than remix as rather a product. And I want to leave you with a very, very quick story. In my home state of Gujarat, there is a writer called Ashwini Bhatt who translates John Grisham novels from English into Gujarati. The problem is that Ashwini Bhatt translates faster than John Grisham writes an original novel. <laughs> yeah? So one day, he runs out of stories to translate. And so what does he do? He starts producing originals that John Grisham never wrote. <laughs> so we now have a peculiar condition of remixed originals where the original never existed and translations do. Thank you.